Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a turntable animation in Rhino. This tool allows you to create a 360 degree turntable style animation of your model in Rhino by rendering out a series of images which you can then turn into a looping animation such as the one displayed here. Now to set this up I've got a simple Rhino model which I've added some block colour textures to and also a simple sunlight just to give us some shadow for the model. Now to set up our turntable animation we need to go to our render tools here and these last three icons here are our animation tools. Now if you can't find this tab these tools can also be found under tools, toolbar layout, under the default option here and if you tick on the animation you open up the animation tools here. And once we've found those tools we're going to open up the animation setup here and we're going to be using the 360 turntable animation. Now I'm going to pick a kind of starting view for my model which I want to set the animation up from which will be kind of around here and we're going to select the 360 turntable animation. Now once you've selected this option you'll get a series of parameters here which we can then change depending on how we want to set up our animation. The number of frames will determine the speed of our turntable animation and essentially it's dividing our 360 degree spin of our model into this number of frames so the more frames you have the slower the animation will be. We'll keep it at 150 for now but then we can try it at a lower and higher just to see the difference in the speed there. Um, direction is just clockwise or anti-clockwise depending on which way you want it to spin. The file type will be the type of file that it saves out when the animation is recorded. For this it will save out a series of JPEG images I usually use JPEG over the other just because it's sort of standard format and you don't get image files that are too large to save. Bear in mind that there will be 150 JPEG images rendered out in this option. So the number of frames indicates the number of static still images you will get when you run this process. So we'll end up with 150 JPEG images which we'll then need to condense back into a video file. The capture method basically describes what the image will look like when you render it out. If you choose render full it will use whichever render engine you have plugged in to Rhino to capture out that image or if you use any of these other options they will use that viewpoint style to render out the image. So for now I'm just going to go for rendered viewport but you could go for the x-ray, the technical pen if you wanted to get a line work style of your image. So depending on the style of the image you want you can use any of the viewport settings there to render out your animation. So we'll just go rendered viewport and then you've got your animation name which will just be the name of the files when you save them out from here. So once you're happy with those parameters we're going to hit OK and you won't notice any immediate change. Now to test the animation to see if it's working correctly we can hit this preview animation button here and it will give us a quick once round of that animation. So there you can see that that's the 360 degree animation at 150 frames. If we go back and we reset that down to 50 frames for example, hit OK and then preview again you can see it's much faster there. So the lower the frames the quicker the animation and the higher the frames the slower the animation will be. And I think 150 frames is working quite well for this so we'll go OK with that. You can also change the angle of the animation by just changing the starting angle of your camera. So if we lower it down here and then we reset the animation like so and then play you'll see that that's the starting angle of the frame. You have to reset the animation each time because if I change the camera and play it again it will just snap back to the original one I'd set. So every time you change the camera angle you need to reset the animation in order for that to be reflected in the animation we've got. So once you're happy with your animation and you want to save it out all you then need to do is hit this record button here. It will ask you for a folder to save the animation in and I've set up a folder here for it to save and once you're happy with that we're just going to hit enter. And depending on the capture method it might either sort of capture it like this where you can see it's basically running through the animation and just saving each of those JPEGs at a time. If you've got it on a render full method it might take a little bit longer because it's going to have to render out each frame of animation in order to get that animation saved now. Now what you'll end up with is a series of JPEG images much like this and I'll just go to my folder where these are currently saving out here. And you'll see here we're going to get a series of JPEGs saved 
for each frame of our animation until it hits 150, which it's nearly at there. And what you'll need to do once these frames of animation are rendered out, in order to kind of condense them into a video file, you'll then need to use a program like After Effects to bring all the frames together and save them out as an MP4 video file. I'll put a link in the description to a video tutorial that goes through those processes. You'll also find that Rhino will also save out this animation HTML file here, which essentially kind of condenses your animation and can play it back for you in a preview method like so. So that was just a quick tutorial on how to create a turntable animation in Rhino using Rhino's built animation tools. Thank you for watching.